Awesome. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm the Grumpy Entrepreneur. And uh, as I previously just said, uh, we've got uh, Ala, who's co-founder of Inoa, which I think I've said correctly. Ala's probably going to correct me if I'm wrong with that. Um, so welcome. How are you today? Thank you, David. Yeah, I'm, I'm really good. I'm, I'm actually excited about the call. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Well, so look, what, instead of me messing it up, why don't you give us the uh, the 60 second ish pitch about your, your your business and where you guys are at the moment in terms of your fundraise and just as, as a business? Great. Well, uh, what I know actually is just in short, it's a property and building services platform that is focused on proper data processing and analyzing. So we can then sort of uh, focus on renewable installations and retrofits. That's primarily to, you know, empower property owners uh, mm -hmm. to increase property uh, energy efficiency, reduce carbon emissions, but also to add their value because we know those type of jobs will do to that. Uh, that's on high level what we do. We work with uh, two sides, uh, property owners and trades contractors. So we have sort of two side marketplace. Right. Uh, we're currently raising uh, our pre-seed round uh, on one million pounds. So we've sort of to the end stretch now. It's just the last bit that we're looking to sort of close out, uh, okay. you know, 10 percent of that full value. And hopefully by July, we'll, we'll have good news and the paperwork has been signed up. Right. Uh, in terms of the business itself, we are pre-seed. So we classify technically as pre-revenue, but we're already generating revenue. We have okay. some monthly recurring from contractors and property owners on listing their properties on the platform right. and also uh, running some retrofit projects with uh, uh, with, with some, some clients that we have. Uh, we have uh, partnerships with uh, HM Landridge and Ordnance Survey. So we right. have sort of, uh, we're part wow. of this nice program uh, yeah. supported by Duration. And uh, also we have the... Uh, sort of, uh, you know, support from uh, various clients and partnerships that we've signed. So we have some contracts uh, that, that add to our revenue over the next three years, which is which is really good news for us. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, well done. So what I'll do, I'll put your uh, a link to your business and to you and contact details in the, in the video as well. So people can uh, drop you a line and uh, fill up that yeah. last part of money that you're, you're after as well. I mean, out of interest, <clears throat> I'm hearing a lot of people out there say it's, it's pre-seed is like, like almost <laughs> feels impossible at the moment as has done for the last kind of six months. How have you found it out of interest? Yeah. I mean, it, it is difficult just out of pure honesty. You know, we've been raising for the past sort of nine months or a year that, you know, and, and it's not easy. I mean, because the questions come up back differently in terms of, Oh, sorry, pre seed technically it's classified as pre revenue, but we generated revenue, but you're too early. It's like, but if you, yeah, it's, <laughs> it, 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 there, there is some trouble with that. So, yeah. right. Cool. So look, I'll get you some questions. They're not standard. Um, um, so this one particularly, because um, I am really bad at DIY, right? Like, like I'm definitely not the DIY in our house. So uh, my first question was, so as, as co-founder, you know, you're aiming to solve issues in the building and renovation space. So, you know, did this business come around because of a bad DIY project? I mean, what was the inspiration? <laughs> Well, that's a that's a good question. There's definitely some truth to that because you know, obviously, I've messed some jobs up, but uh, uh, and obviously, I've learned from my process and the work, uh, and and that's definitely been one of the drivers how I came up with that. Uh, but because I was on the tools for seventeen plus years. I realized that working with other trade contractors and clients, I saw their pain points. They sort of lack of knowledge understanding the properties understanding things around projects you know or how to monitor things how to keep the funds safe all of those sort of payment related issues led to that then i started to see wait if there is only one me i can't replicate myself so how about i'll transfer my brain into a computer program and see what we can do with that and it seems to work so yeah really great so look your company leverages cognitive te you know, technologies right so what so will my house be smart enough to clean itself one day? Because I'm I'm seriously waiting on that because my I have two young daughters and their bedrooms are, uh, are like constant bomb sites. So is that a thing that's going to happen and make my life easier? Well, yeah, we, we are leveraging cognitive technologies and I'm sure that on one, one day you can sort of automate the whole cleaning process of that. And well, we see some great advancement in the robotics uh, and, you know, tech in general. Like we can see how we already have uh, robotic vacuums, for instance. So you can set the programs to clean your house. 
we have those vacuums you can throw your clothes in and they will separate it for you to wash them and dry them and do whatever. So I'm sure that this day isn't far, but yeah. there's still some time that needs to go yeah. into that. So you're saying that my daughters will probably have left home by <laughs> <laughs> yeah, around. Exactly. Um, so they will probably get their daughters to yeah, do that. Yeah, that'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the story of my life. So, um, so look, innovation and creativity come often from surprising sources. So tell me, what's the weirdest source of inspiration that you've, you've had for your work at, at Inoa? You know, i be very honest with you. I get most of my inspiration during meditations. Okay. So I meditate and I start getting, because I'm fascinated by ancient architect, modern architecture as well and design and how things are built or nature and animals. This is another way of looking at, you know, how beavers are building the dams and how they do yeah. those little caves and separating the pregnant sort of beaver from the rest of the crew and, you know, protection and how they plaster things. So I was fascinated by seeing those type of things and how quickly they do it and what the process is like. And then you sort of transfer that thinking, why are not humans using that in the normal retrofit process, yeah. right? Because that's at the end of the day would be something. And and I'm also observing humans, their psychology and, you know, okay. just their behavior. Wow. And during my meditation, all of those things get mixed up. And then I start getting solutions and ideas and insights. Hey, and that's how we've been actually developing uh, I know. Oh, wow. So maybe, I need to go, maybe I need to go and watch some documentaries on beavers to improve my DIY. That, that Definitely. One, that's, that's been the thing I've been missing for like almost that's 20 the, years. You know, the initial idea I actually had was to create the computer created or like a computer program created DIY uh, videos for homeowners. That was my very, very first oh, idea, but okay. I didn't go very far with that because I, I understood that YouTube is full of them. So. Yeah. Well, I didn't I didn't expect an answer to do with animals and meditation. So that's brilliant. Um, and you know, look, you pitched your business for like nine to 12 months um, and received, what's what's the advice that you've received that was so bad you just wanted to leave the room? Because I've been there myself where, you know, I'd be pitching <clears throat> probably more uh, more the pre-seed, seed kind of stage. And I, some people would just come up with some of the like cr worst advice ever. And you just, you know, went, wow, okay, we're done. I mean, have you had any of those moments? Yeah, we have actually a couple. So, uh what happened once is uh, we met this investor and we spoke about the cognitive uh, solutions. That word cognitive was just, that was the only word he picked up during this sort of, uh, and then he started talking about algorithms, said you only need to talk about these things, the buzzwords in your tech, because I was thinking, well, it's not, you know, you need to give people some of the problems or insights. Yeah. And we have had some others where the investors have said, or oh, they, you know, we've been in a room, like only use numbers. Don't talk about your product at all. Just talk about the numbers. And it's like, no, so so what? So I'll tell you my revenue numbers, and would that be it? I, I, it yeah, no, it, it wouldn't work. So th th those have been very bad. And you know, even early stage, you know, doing it first time in terms of a startup as such in, the, in a technology space, you come to understand that that's just complete. Wow, I didn't. I mean, I mean, don't get, don't get me wrong. I'm a numbers person. Uh, on on pitches but you know you kind of need to know what it is as well right so uh to put the context <laughs> on the numbers so okay um interesting i mean what surprised you the most on your journey so far good and bad okay i start with a bad one uh okay. and i would say actually the bad one is with what i've experienced myself from the investment point of view with some of the larger vcs and you know the sort of slow uh, movement or not being responsive enough because I feel like as a startup you want to move ahead quickly you have this great product service you can prove what you've done the achievements etc but it's not always in their best interest so you know that's been definitely a, a bad one for us especially in the European market we haven't seen that from the US but I feel like the European sort of investors that we have met to some extent not everyone some that has been left a bad taste in our mouth, definitely. Wow. And I, I've seen that from other founders, you know, mm -hmm. they've, they've sort of spoken about that. So uh, in terms of good, um, I mean, we actually part of, we've been part of two accelerators, one Google for startups, other one now, which is called Duration. Great support. Like we lo yeah. I love what these guys are doing, how they help us grow, what type of tools and incentives do they offer us, the community, the peer support. Hmm. These have definitely been some been some good uh, good things, um, and yeah, maybe, yeah. 
I, yeah, I would I mean, actually that's, say it's, that's it's brilliant. To, yeah. That's brilliant to hear, actually, because accelerators do get a bad, a bad press sometimes. Okay, because there <clears throat> there are some ones that aren't so good out there, and they feel very much like they're taking a percentage of the business and they're not really doing much for that. So it's so, good to hear yeah. the good ones. I, I guess you're right in terms of that. But we've been lucky to be involved in those that don't. They actually give you that sort of support, even giving you grant funding in terms of, hey, here is you know a bit of money, incentives, mm. marketing help. Here are some contacts, clients. It's, and it's like, wow, you know, that really helps us to get off the ground. So maybe another thing actually just to mention is how much good technology is lying around. You can see some great ideas coming up, but they're not always getting executed. Yeah. And what we've done in the early stage, we've actually uh, patented some of our system methods. So we filed for six system method patents, oh, wow. which is really good when we come around that sort of ideas around IoT or the connected homes in the future where we're trying to head to. Yeah. So I, I think this has been something good for us to see as well. Well, the pattern is, is, is really interesting. You said that. I didn't realize that about that you'd, you'd done that it's because, <clears throat> with, you know, one thing I'm seeing with some investors is that they're more interested in the patents in terms of the investment than they are the rest of the business. Um, there's one particular investor I know, uh, and, you know, he he invested in a business that had um, some patents around uh, recyclable cardboard, as it turns out, right? But the business ended up getting purchased by HP because they owned all these patents. Uh, yeah. and it done very little turnover, really, in relation to what the valuation they got. Um, and there's a lot of interest at the moment. I, I'm seeing... Um, I'm kind of pushing people and saying, like, you know, get get what you can patented, and you know, you're that that is valuable in itself, right? Absolutely. Well, the IP we find very valuable. There was a, another incident where we actually saw someone infringing our IP, the trademark. Right. So we have a trademark under I know called Know Your Property. It's the world's first service that we build in terms of that, hmm. and you know, that's where the know comes in from the knowledge. Uh, and we saw them infringing that. We reached out, they removed it right away, and it works. And that's the great defensibility you can create around the business. And we find, found that sometimes those ideas are laying around there. We have come up with the same type of, you know, or similar ideas. We think, why don't we put the uh, IP on it? Yeah. Because it gives you the instant protection. So, and it has worked. So, yeah. Yeah. I once had someone, uh, I trademarked the Grumpy Entrepreneur, and I once had someone call themselves the Grumpy Entrepreneur, uh, who I ended up having a beer with in London because they were from abroad. And, uh, actually helped him out <laughs> so <laughs> that's amazing yeah, yeah it, is, you know, it was uh, but um um so look next one if you had any building in the world because you're a you know you've done 17 years in the trade effectively if you like yeah if there was any building in the world that you could renovate what building would it be well i'll, I'll stay local i'll stay in the uk uh because i see that market really needs help here and i'm choosing the house of parliament the reason oh. for that is because I'm obviously I told you I'm fascinated about the ancient history <laughs> and the architecture and design. And that's quite an old and complex structure because it has so many structural elements to it. And what we realized is, well, I've actually read that, that they have planned to spend around 22 billion in the next 76 years or something to renovate this whole place. And it's like, OK, that's a long time. It's a lot of money. And we see, we love challenges in, in, in Inova. And one thing that we could do with our Know Your Property service is actually figure out those best possible solutions that would apply for that House of Parliament in terms of retrofitting, getting new you know, energy sources into that and actually making it more energy efficient. Because I'm sure it's a listed building, it consumes a lot of energy. Yeah. And yeah, it's something that would give us the great challenge, but would be a nice achievement for us to, to you know, if it was... In, in our in our hands and who wow. knows because it's it's still under renovation for the next seven six years so it is it is it's uh they must spend a lot of money on electricity because i've been around there a few times and there's lights on everywhere there's just lights on yeah. everywhere. it's crazy <laughs> right and I, I, that's what i find fascinating because it, it it's a great opportunity if it would ever come uh to us and hopefully it does so yeah right, we'll have to get you in there tendering for the project then some project exactly. right there. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice no i wouldn't say no to that <laughs> um and if you were trapped on a desert island and have one piece of uh building or renovation equipment what would it be and why Hmm, interesting one random I mean, question it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah no it's it's very good actually i like that i've, I've thought about this before uh i mean it's not quite building a renovation tool but you know the multi-tool the swiss knife 
Yeah. There yeah. used to be a movie called MacGyver, and he always used to, he got away from anything. Even if he was trapped in a cell, he was able to build something to get out. You know, if he was in a remote island, he was able to survive. So that would be definitely, but if I had to choose a second one in terms of what's a proper tool, I would pro uh, probably axe. Because you yes. can use it both ways. You can cut things down. You can, you know, sharpen things, do whatever you want. So definitely yeah. useful tools to have. I always used to joke about it. I don't know if you, if you, you're probably too young, but there used to be a TV show called The A Team. And they used yeah. to get stuck in barns and manage to build vehicles out of like basically tape and find a welding gun. Like I was always amazed. Yeah. <laughs> like, they just happened to be in, stuck in a building surrounded by gunfire and, there was everything you could build in like a vehicle or a That's the same era as MacGyver, definitely. This yeah, is the, yeah, yeah. I think they're like, from the same era, so yeah. Yeah, they're just like they were they literally they could and it was it was like they didn't have to do any testing, it just worked. I mean <laughs> Exactly. So that was, <laughs> that was a good startup either. in practice. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <clears throat> so I'll, I'm gonna sort of a last question and uh it's a, it's a brace yourself. Um if Anaya was a superhero. What would its yeah. superpower be, and who would its arch nemesis be? Hmm. Well, almost you know, as random as a desert island island question. Yeah, <laughs> but I'll go from the name. Uh, I know her, and I think the word is called om om omniscience, the all knowing yes. superpower. So that's what I know it would be, because eventually we have an a AI model that we build called Crystal. And Crystal would be someone that if you came to ask her, hey, what can I do with my property? What's this, what that? She will be able to answer you. And I think if, you know, Jarvis and maybe uh, the vision from Avengers would have a baby, then that would be Crystal. And Crystal will have a superpower of omniscience. So that's what it'd be. In terms of nemesis, would that be in a sense of a business or like on that? It could be any fictional. It's, it's an open-ended question. <laughs> so I would say it would be someone like Ultron from Avengers, but that oh, you know, tries right, to destroy yeah. the world, tries to copy everyone, to put all their ideas. It's like like-to-like -like competitors that we have that just copy everything that's on the market to try and offer some sort of business to a client on their expense. So not to the, always to the benefit of the client. And I think that ruins the market, but at the same time, you see he was kind of, you know, trying to destroy the world and ruin the humanity as well. So that's a good example. Like Ultron will be definitely the nemesis there. And, 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 and uh, you know, and I know that Vision actually beat him. So <laughs> I'm coming yeah. sorry <laughs> from that sort of fictional way. But, so that was great. Yeah. Okay. That that was awesome. They were great answers, by the way. I've, I've actually really enjoyed this conversation for uh, Thursday, Thursday morning. Um, so look, everybody, I'm going to put uh the links in the in the youtube um description so you can get in contact uh and 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 speak to these guys um i think it's probably one to watch um and uh you know i want to thank you Al for your time today because that was um that was really really good so everybody uh when the video is up please like and subscribe because gosh i need some subscribers because i'm just starting out on this and uh i'll speak to you all again soon and thank you sir thank you so much david it was it was a pleasure no problem.